Welcome to Medical Specialists Associates Educational Series on Critical Care Medicine Topics. I'm your content presenter, Christopher Voss, MD, board certified in anesthesiology, critical care, and neurocritical care medicine. Today, we'll explore the use of procalcitonin in antibiotic stewardship. Procalcitonin is a peptide precursor of the hormone calcitonin, which is produced by the thyroid gland. Under normal conditions, procalcitonin levels in the blood are low. However, during bacterial infections, procalcitonin levels rise significantly, making it a useful biomarker for bacterial infections. During a bacterial infection, procalcitonin is produced by various tissues and organs in response to inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1B, TNFA, and IL-6. This elevation occurs within a few hours of the infection and correlates with the severity of the bacterial infection. Procalcitonin is downregulated in viral infections, making it a valuable marker to distinguish between bacterial and viral infections. Procalcitonin can be used to guide the initiation and discontinuation of antibiotic therapy. Its use helps in reducing unnecessary antibiotic exposure, thereby minimizing the risk of antibiotic resistance, side effects, and healthcare costs. Procalcitonin is particularly useful in several clinical scenarios. Lower respiratory tract infections, LRTIs, helps differentiate between bacterial and viral infections, guiding the need for antibiotics. Sepsis, assists in the diagnosis and management of sepsis, aiding in early initiation and appropriate duration of antibiotic therapy. Postoperative infections helps identify bacterial infections in postoperative patients, reducing unnecessary antibiotic use. Procalcitonin-guided algorithms have been developed to standardize its use in clinical practice. For example, Initiation of antibiotics, if procalcitonin levels are above a certain threshold, e.g. W25-UGL for LRTIs, consider starting antibiotics. Antibiotics are strongly encouraged if levels are above 0.5-UGL. Discontinuation of antibiotics if procalcitonin levels drop by 80% from baseline or fall below 0.5-UGL, consider stopping antibiotics. Antibiotics should be strongly encouraged to stop if levels fall below 0.25-UGL. Several studies support the use of procalcitonin in antibiotic stewardship. PROHOSP trial demonstrated that procalcitonin-guided therapy safely reduced antibiotic exposure in LRTIs. PRORATA trial showed that procalcitonin guidance reduced antibiotic use in ICU patients without affecting outcomes. SAPS trial found that procalcitonin guidance reduced antibiotic use and was associated with a lower 28-day mortality. While procalcitonin is a valuable tool, it has limitations. Viral infections, procalcitonin levels typically remain low in viral infections, which limits its use in distinguishing bacterial from viral causes in some contexts. Non-infectious inflammation, conditions like major surgery, trauma, or certain autoimmune diseases can elevate procalcitonin levels, potentially leading to false positives. Localized infections, infections such as abscesses and osteomyelitis, might not significantly elevate procalcitonin levels, leading to false negatives. Urinary tract infections, UTIs, procalcitonin is not reliable in detecting lower UTIs like cystitis because these infections do not usually cause a significant systemic inflammatory response, leading to normal procalcitonin levels. Procalcitonin can be used to screen for the necessity of drawing blood cultures. Elevated procalcitonin levels correlate with a higher likelihood of bacteremia. Studies have shown that using a procalcitonin cutoff of 0.5 ngml can predict bacteremia with a sensitivity of 76% and specificity of 69%, making it a useful tool in deciding whether to draw blood cultures. Procalcitonin is particularly specific in conditions such as pneumonia and positive blood cultures. For pneumonia, procalcitonin has a sensitivity of 89% and a specificity of 75%, helping to distinguish bacterial from viral causes and guide appropriate antibiotic use. In cases of bacteremia, procalcitonin has a high negative predictive value, meaning that low levels can effectively rule out bacteremia, which is critical in antibiotic stewardship. Specifically, a sensitivity of 76% and a specificity of 69% for bacteremia make procalcitonin a reliable marker in these conditions. In patients with renal insufficiency, procalcitonin levels can be falsely elevated. Therefore, different cutoff values are recommended. For patients with an estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR, of 30 to 60 ml min-173M2, a cutoff value of 106 ngml is suggested. 
For patients with an EGFR of less than 30 mel min 73 m 2 a higher cutoff value of TOI50 NGML is recommended to account for decreased clearance of procalcitonin. Various medical societies have incorporated procalcitonin into their guidelines. Infectious Diseases Society of America, IDSA, recommends considering procalcitonin levels in conjunction with clinical judgment to guide antibiotic therapy in LRTIs and sepsis. Surviving Sepsis Campaign suggests using procalcitonin levels to support shortening the duration of antibiotic therapy in sepsis patients who have improved clinically. When using procalcitonin in clinical practice, consider the following. Integration with clinical judgment. Procalcitonin should be used as an adjunct to, not a replacement for, clinical assessment and other diagnostic tools. Let's consider a case study of a 70-year-old male presenting with symptoms of community-acquired pneumonia. Initial procalcitonin levels were 0.3 UGL, suggesting a bacterial infection. Antibiotic therapy was initiated. After three days of treatment, procalcitonin levels dropped to 0.1 UGL, and the patient's condition improved clinically, leading to the discontinuation of antibiotics based on procalcitonin-guided protocols. In conclusion, procalcitonin is a valuable biomarker in antibiotic stewardship, helping to optimize antibiotic use and improve patient outcomes. However, it is essential to understand its limitations and use it in conjunction with clinical judgment and other diagnostic tools.